Okay, it's time for us to take a look at a demo on a password cracking tool by name Hashcat. But before taking a look at the demo, this is the disclaimer. This video is for educational purposes only and all the password cracking attacks were performed in a controlled virtual lab environment and the presenter by no means is responsible for any misuse of the information presented in this video and the presenter does not support any malicious hacking activities password cracking on systems is a cyber crime and will land you in jail if you misuse such tools on systems for which you don't have permission so do not try these things on systems for which you don't have the permission okay now let's move to the demo this demo is on a tool by name Hashcat and Hashcat is an offline password cracking tool. So in the previous session or in our last session, we have looked at what is an offline password cracking tool and how it is different from an online password cracking tool. We have looked at what is a brute force attack, what is a dictionary based attack, why we need a dictionary. So all these things we have seen on password cracking in the last uh, session. If you're not clear with that, please uh, go and refer to the session and come to this session. So Hashcat is a offline password cracking tool. So Hashcat is the self-proclaimed world's fastest CPU based password recovery tool. And it has support for many hashing algorithms like uh, Microsoft's LM hashes, MD5, the SHA family of hashes, Unix script formats, MySQL, and Cisco picks. So even before going into this demo, let us take a short recap of what are these offline password cracking tools. For that, we have to know how passwords are stored in the system. So a registration form is there and the user enters name and password. And this goes and it's getting stored in the database. And um, say in the database, the username is stored in plain text, whereas the registration number is sent to a hash function like MD5 or SHA whatever it is and then it is hashed to a string and it is stored like this. The length of the string depends on the hash function used. If you use uh, SHA512 the length of the string will be 512 bits. If you use SHA1 the length will be 160 bits. So depending on the hash function we get the length. So that's how passwords are stored inside the database and uh, what we have learned is an hacker somehow gets the list of all the hashed uh, passwords. So you'll be able to retrieve all the hash values of the passwords from the database. So that is the thing that the hacker somehow gets. And what is the challenge here? What the hacker does here? The hacker uses this uh, file. What is this file? This file is the file containing all the hashed passwords from a database that he has hacked into. And uh, his challenge is somehow you should identify what is the plain text corresponding to each of the hashed password. So you should somehow find that. But as you know, hashing algorithms are irreversible. So he cannot just reverse it like that and he has to find some other strategy. So what strategy he adopts is he uses a password cracking tool and this password cracking tool uses a dictionary of commonly used passwords and he takes every password and then he hashes it. So it's mandatory that this person should specify what kind of hashing algorithm should be used here. Say, depending on the type of hash that is generated, it's possible to find what hashing algorithm was used to generate that hash. So looking at this hash, you can very well understand that it is an MD5 based hash. So an MD5 hash function was used for generating these hashes. So you will be taking the password from the dictionary and giving it to an MD5 hash function so that you'll be able to generate the hash value for the password. So once when he generates an hash value for the password, you'll be comparing that in the list of hashes in the password file. And if there is a match, is there a match here? Yes, there is a match. So you will be able to know that this hash corresponds to the password welcome because when he used welcome and hashed it, he was able to get this hash uh, string and this string matches this string in the password file from the database. And uh, you'll be able to understand that the plain text for this hash is welcome. 
like that you will be able to crack all the passwords all the hashes here you'll be able to generate the plain text out of it so this entire process can be carried offline no need to be connected to a system when he, uh, why he is performing this and that's why it's called an offline password cracking tool so now for our demo we'll be taking the hash of all passwords from a database right i'll be using a file by name pass.lst so this file is going to have the list of hashes from a database let's assume that this file contains all these hashes and uh, there will be a dictionary that of uh, common passwords used right and we need a file for that and that file is called common.txt so these two files will be used in a demo and the tool that we are going to use is hashcat so hashcat will be used by your hacker and uh, this file common.txt will contain commonly used passwords and pass.lst is assumed to be the file containing the md5 hashes from a database the hash function that we are going to use is md5 here that's it uh, let's now go to the demo first let us take a look at this pass.lst file what is this pass.lst it is the file containing all the hashes from a database that is uh, if we go back that is pass.lst is the file that represents the file from the database containing all the hashed passwords that's what is pass.lst so for our demonstration we are going to use kali linux and kali linux comes with this tool called hashcat so if you go to kali linux and then if you go to password attacks you'll have two kinds of tools online and offline i told you hashcat is an offline uh, password attacking tool so you can click on offline and you will see we have hashcat tool here so hashcat comes pre-installed with kali linux so that is there so our tool is there what next uh, we have to check so our hashcat tool comes with a kali linux distribution so it is ready now we have to look at pass.lst what is this file and do we have all these hashes in that file let me show you that so pass.lst so this is the file which i have created and uh, this contains a lot of hashed passwords see these are the hash passwords and we need to find the corresponding text for all these passwords the plain text so the file name is pass.lst let's assume that we have exported this file out of a database and we are having it here so our pass.lst file is available so this file is available and what is this common.txt from where can we get all the commonly used passwords we said people are using passwords and we can very well find all the commonly used passwords so again kali linux helps us with that so let's go back to kali linux let's come out of this so you can go and uh, locate word lists so word lists actually give you the list of all files that contain commonly used passwords across the globe so you have hundreds and thousands of uh, commonly used passwords present in these files readily available for you and it comes with the kali linux distribution so how dangerous it is you have the list of commonly available passwords readily available to you in files so there are uh, popular files like rocku.txt it contains uh, thousands of commonly used passwords likewise you have uh, unix passwords.txt you have common.txt so a lot of uh, files are there and uh, you can use any of these files as your dictionary so i am going to use one file that is uh, locate common.txt that's like one file i have selected so this is the file i'm going to use it is a wi-fi cracker word list it contains some common passwords used so let me copy this let's see what is there inside this file let's go and uh, paste this so when i open this file you can see the commonly used passwords are there inside this file so we can use this file for as a dictionary for our attack 
So what is this file called? This is comment.txt and uh, that is what is our dictionary here. So we have the file from the database that is passed at LST. We have the dictionary file also available in Kali Linux. We have the hashcat tool also is available in Kali Linux. Now let us run this tool and see how to crack the passwords. So let me go back to Kali Linux. Uh, let me uh, clear the screen. So how to run hashcat is you have to give hashcat. And then we have to mention which hash function we are going to use. Say it's very important, right? Because we are going to take every commonly used password from common.txt and then we are going to pass it to a hash function. So what hash function we are working here is we are working with md5. So for that we have to say iPhone name 0. So here 0 represents md5. Based on the hash that is being used for generating the passwords, this value will vary. And the attack mode is given as 0. The attack mode is given as 0. We have a set of uh, attack modes here and we'll see that after this demo. And the output, say once when we crack the passwords, the output will be written to a file. I'll call this, I'll call that file to be satishout.txt. And uh, what is our database file name? So the database file that is coming with the hash passwords is pass.lst. Let me give that file pass.lst and we have, to, we have to pass the dictionary containing the common passwords what is the dictionary containing the common passwords is the common.txt file let's pass that one too so we are ready to run our hashcat uh, let's see whether it's working okay now this error is what i am getting and i will tell you how to solve this error I'll solve this error. We are getting a warning here and we can override this warning by just giving hyphen hyphen force. And uh, let me clear. Let me again type this command. So now I will override that warning by giving force. And then I'll also use hyphen hyphen show. What is the use of show here is it will show the output of only cracked passwords. Say if we have 10 hashes in our file, let me go to the file. Say if we have uh, 10 hashed uh, passwords in a file and uh, if our system is able to crack only 5, the output will contain only the cracked passwords. It will not include the passwords that were not cracked. So that is the use of show there. Let us uh, run this. Yeah, it is uh, done. Let us check whether our, our output file is created. So our output file here is satishout.txt. So it is created. Let's see what is there inside this output file. That is nano satish out dot text. Yeah, all the passwords were cracked. Say for every hash, the corresponding plain text password has been retrieved. So now you understand the dangers of using a very simple and common passwords. So you have hundreds and thousands of commonly used passwords available in a Linux distribution and uh, this tool hashcat just like that is able to crack all the md5 hashes back to its uh, plain text so that's how hashcat is used we can also look at uh, the help available for hashcat by giving man hashcat so it details the tool. It's an help manual for the tool. So you get uh, all the data about this uh, tool. So here, as I told you, iPhone name we were using that is used for mentioning the hash type. What kind of hash function we have to use? iPhone A is for the attack mode, and uh, iPhone iPhone force is for ignoring warnings. And uh, we have used there are a lot of commands here, but we have used uh, some of them. And show is for showing only cracked passwords. So you'll be able to see only the cracked passwords in your output file. Whereas iPhone iPhone left is for showing only the uncracked passwords. And uh, let's uh, take a look at the attack mode. So I was giving iPhone A and then zero, right? What does that mean? That is nothing but the attack mode here. So if iPhone A and zero is given, 
it means the attack mode is straight so we went in for the first uh, mode and hash types so i iphon m and zero refers md5 hashes so this is very important you have to select the exact hash function that was used for hashing your passwords in the database so only then you'll be able to get back all the plain text uh, messages okay so if you're going to use uh, sha512 then we have to give iphone m and 1700 so based on the kind of hash and the platform you have to use the appropriate number to get your uh, plain text back okay so that's how uh, hashcat is uh, being used and uh, we have seen just a few of the commands here you can go and look at all the commands and still explore further uh, on how to use hashcat again uh, we have used such a dictionary attack while we are looking at the sql map demo that is sql automated sql injection attack demo using sql map and there we were using this dictionary attack we were able to log into the database get all the hash passwords and we enabled a dictionary attack that was brute force and we were able to get the plain text right so that kind of uh, dictionary attack is what we are seeing with hashcat i hope you are now very clear with how to use hashcat but that doesn't mean that you have to go and immediately start attacking systems using all these password files available here as i told you password cracking is a cyber crime and if you try that on systems you'll be easily caught when they are having firewalls network intuition and detection prevention systems effectively monitoring every uh, incoming packet so if you try continuously attacking uh, or uh, if you try to gather information of a database and its hashed uh, passwords you are performing a cyber crime and uh, you will be in serious trouble so do not attempt all these things for systems or data on which you don't have permission.